Look at somebody and say, we were designed to be surrounded by blessings. By consistently maintaining our state of righteousness. Which is the decree of our king over our kingdom. In Jesus' name. Look at somebody and say, do you know you are blessed? Born to be blessed. Born to be blessed. And always shall be blessed. And always shall be blessed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And mercy shall follow us all the days of your life. Amen. We are the one I've learned from bad habit how to get rid of the surely goodness and mercy. And what God is constantly trying to do is take away the bad habit so we stop destroying the ceaseless blessing. Yes, Lord. Amen? Amen? In the name of Jesus. As we were looking at surround blessing state of righteousness, we learn through the constitution of the kingdom, we need to be healed to eliminate the things that is stopping us from operating in constant blessing. We learn we have some way that is sabotaging and destroying our own blessing, so we need it to be delivered. And we are in the process of freedom. The Bible says you can be healed, you can be delivered, and you can be set free. free. Amen? Amen? In the name of Jesus. Jesus had already atoned. He could have left us and said, okay, I've saved you now from dying from sin. But there's only one problem. We didn't know how to operate as free men and women. So he said, I'm going to send my spirit. They're going to lead you into all truth to make sure you can maximize and actualize your freedom. Amen. Some of you have heard me tell a story. I heard of, uh, someone told me once, um, in Mexico, they catch parrots, and we used to do it back home too. And when you catch the parrot, you put a glass dome over the parrot. And the parrot would try to fly to get away, because he could see through the dome. But if he fly, he hit the glass, he hit the glass, he hit the glass. After a period of time, even when you take the glass dome off, what happened? He will never go. The person can walk with the parrot on the shoulder and the parrot will never fly. Because the parrot believes in his mind over a period of time, he is what? Trapped. Yeah. Yeah. So even though when you free the parrot, the parrot will not go. Because the parrot, if I try, I'm going to get what? Hurt. And most of us live our lives that way. You stop trying. Yes. One of the number one things the enemy has to kill, it's something every child is born with. You know this what? Your imagination. Mm -hmm. When you first come and you are a child, anybody talk to you? What are you going to be? I'll be this and I'll be that and I'll be... You are unlimited in your potential. Mm -hmm. Now when you look into most people's eyes, there is no more dreams. Mm -hmm. There is no more hope. Lack of righteousness has made them hit the glass too often. Mm -hmm. They have failed so often yeah. that they don't want to try what? Yeah. Anymore. If someone go, are you, I've always heard you talk, you're going to start a business. You understand? They go, that will never work. They are so good at keeping themselves in prison. The only reason you fail, you lack righteousness. You didn't understand. Righteousness is nothing more the right way of doing things. Yes. Understand, the right way. And you have failed so much, you have stopped dreaming. You go, I, I stopped thinking such stupid thing. You have settled. And resolve yourself that life's going to just be suffering and pain and hardship and mediocrity and this is as good as it gets. Some of you can't wait to die. One of your greatest aspirations is a vacation. This is the level of your freedom. I can't wait to go on a vacation at the year end. You consider that freedom. Every day is supposed to be vacation. In fact, you will know you will be free. When you become free, you won't want vacation. Why? Because every day is vacation. You always know when you're trapped because you're feeling so much pressure all the time and not getting the grace. Mm -hmm. You always need what? A break. Yeah. When you are free all the time, you're always, you understand, full of energy and strength mm -hmm. and enthusiasm to engage in your daily tasks, whatsoever they will mm -hmm. be. We were looking over the last couple of weeks, we were focusing on freedom. And the Bible teaches us 
that it's the truth that actualize and accentuate our freedom. Yes. If you don't have truth, I don't care. You have abilities that has been nullified that just there doesn't work. You understand? And you have abilities to be free, but because of your thinking and your condition, as I said, they have been nullified, you will not operate as a free being. You will not operate to the height of your potential. Even science and most of us only use what? Five to ten percent. The rest of it you don't believe in anymore. Yeah. You have long left it when you are a child. Amen? The free spirit, you have kind of forsaken. You're like, I don't want your ideas. Every time I come in the spirit, you give me a whole lot of ideas that I can't run and I just suffer. So we learn to stay away from the spirit. Because anytime you come into the spirit, you become from inspired. The word spirit is to be what? In spirit. Anytime you come into the spirit, one becomes what? Inspired. Amen. You want to get back your imagination going? You want to get inspired to feel that there's nothing you cannot do? Get in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, because of your lack of your mental preparation to operate in righteousness, you could not walk out your inspiration. So you have learned to stay away from the realms of the spirit. You know, um, this week, the Lord has asked me to prepare this for you guys. Thank you, Sister Jane. Thank you. When I'm in the spirit, my creativity is like there's no tomorrow. In fact, I can hardly focus on anything else except what's come. What we call revelation is, not, is what? Constant inspiration from the spirit. Amen. It comes when you spend time in the spirit. Amen. Children are closer to the spirit than they are into their mental conceptualization of self and the world and things. You know, this is why they get inspired all the time. Amen. And the Lord said, I want to give them six keys to maximize their freedom. I think Sister Jing has given it to you guys by now. Six keys to maximize. The six keys we've been talking about. But you got one to organize them. That they are effective and they can get to them very quickly. Amen. And fast. Because you have to be able to reference it to deal with the variations of life. Amen? Amen? And these are the six keys we've been talking about. Key one. We, and I, last week when I talked to you, I said, these are the legal positioning for effective maneuvering. The legal positioning for effective maneuvering. From this process, I'm hoping to go to what I call the, the moral element of being free. Things like the Bible said, well, because you are free and you've been forgiven. Don't you think it's morally right that you should forgive somebody? You know what I mean? If good has been done for you, it shouldn't be a law. Because good has been done for you, don't it make sense that maybe you should treat somebody good? Isn't that morally correct? Do you understand me? Perfect. It does pay it forward. It makes sense, don't it? But typically, because you have learned to keep away from your inspiration, because your mind was ready to move on the things your inspiration has been showing you, you have experienced so much pain, the only thing you are paying for it is more what? Pain. Pain always promote and project more what? Pain. Hurting people always hurt what? Other people. Free people always free other people. Look, look at somebody and say, I'll be free in others. Be because the Lord has freed me. Because, because the Lord has freed me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Of the six key of maximizing your freedom, and I just want to summarize where we left off last week. The first one, as you look in your paper, it said, No, Jesus was born to be king. And his father said, you are a king. He said, for this reason I was born. The only reason I was born to be king. He said, the purpose of my birth, you understand, is to be king. And I want you to understand, I want to show you a little bit of scriptural, a little bit of constitution, foundation. I want you to turn with me to your Bible, or if Jim can bring it up, Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. You need to understand the king decreed and see how it's built. As I said, I won't spend a lot of time on these six keys because I've taught them to you, but I want to summarize them, that there's a consummation of them. Isaiah 
We sing the song when we were starting this message. All authority. All victory. Amen. It's yours. We need to understand it. For to us a child is born. So someone was born to us. Someone was born to us. To us, a son is given. So someone was given to us. Someone was given to us. Now why? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. The one that was born and given to us, the government is placed on what? On him. Kingdom, mamlaka, is placed on what? Him. Sovereignty is placed what? On him. You see, you need to understand king. Why the Bible say a king was born? Someone in order to, was born to carry the government of humanity. Someone was born and given to carry, you see, the government. Now you do know what government do. Government make laws. They form the constitution of how you live. They create the culture. What is, what, where to drive. You understand? What taxes you have to pay. You see, the, in, in, even in Canada, it is the government in power forms the various laws and the way the economy and the society goes. You understand? This is why different government, whether even in the United States, for instance, in the United States, Thanksgiving used to be on the 15th when someone got into power. They go, no, I want to change it to the 30th or when, the end of the month. This is what government does. So God go, and there, there have been many, many governments since the fall of men. He go, I am going to give one to you, then I'm going to place the government. He said, and he is going to bring the law and make the law. He is going to sustain the law. And he's going to enforce the law. So one was given to us to make laws, to sustain law, and to enforce law. The Bible said, and his law is righteous. Amen. In essence, his law will make you yatir, Amen. excel. He goes, if you follow his government, you can't fail. It is very important for you to understand why Jesus was born to be king. Meaning to have a government. But his government is designed to make you a win. You see, what's killing you, you're in a government that is designed to what? Mm -hmm. Nullify your abilities. Yes, destroy your potential. Destroy your potential. Mm -hmm. It knows how to get you out of your spirit. Yeah. To stop your inspiration. Mm -hmm. To get you into your head outside of inspiration. Mm -hmm. But God go, okay, we got to change this. You guys ain't winning. All of you are for, the Bible said this. All of you are fall short of glory. Yeah. Glory meaning your, your highest self, your weighted self, your greatest potential. Meaning none of us was what? Hidden it. Mm. He says, so all of you, right. you understand? I, I fall to unrighteousness, sin. So he said, I am sending one to guarantee what? Your success. This is why Jesus birthed. This is why when the, when the wise man and all the prophets, they travel for miles. Someone was coming to bring a government that allowed humanity once again to what? Win. This is why Jesus being born to be king is so important. You have to know. Why? The government. The law provider. The law sustainer. The law enforcer. Do you understand? This, all the fuss over is birth. You understand? Why the king wanted him killed? Willing to kill all the babies. Why the wise man travel? Divine government was coming that allowed human to what? Yet here. Do you understand? Look at somebody and say, I'm in that government. The government designed to make me win. The government of righteousness. The government that allows me to excel. That's my king. He was born for you. Listen, if you, you need to go back and study his birth. Amen. His birth is such an awesome thing that it travels for miles and bring him all kind of riches. Why? Someone came who's going to turn the tide for mankind. The parrot in the cage is about to be turned out. Amen. That's why we worship. Amen. This is why we say, All authority, heavy victory is yours. He was born for this. He was born for you. This is why without Jesus you can't win. Amen. Because, you understand? You see, to win, you need a, gov a, a, a governing force, an, an authorized force that allows you and empowers you. Yes. Do you understand this? You know, in many countries this happens, especially in the West Indies and smaller countries. When your party get into power, 
you get all the contracts, all the business, everything. The other party that lose, they get nothing. Mm. You get all the favors, all the jobs, all, all the big contract. Because the new party gets into what? Power. Mm. Do you understand this? this? Even in the United States, all these things is the same thing. You see, the whole idea of Democratic and Republican is who get into power gets all what? They blocks all the other one. Mm. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. If you understand king and kingdom, and to you a son was given, the government is on his shoulder. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Amen. Anything that's legally, the Bible said the Holy Spirit is going to lead you into all truth. Any legal ramification that is not working properly, the Holy Spirit has to what? Fix it. Do you understand? Amen. You're supposed to look at your life and say, Lord, I don't think this is glorious to you. I don't think this reflects our kingdom and your kingship. You go, that's okay. I'll show you what I'll do with that. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible Amen. said to us, that child was born, was given to us, and the governor is upon his shoulder. Amen. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Amen. Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Amen? Of eternity, Prince of Peace. Verse 7 says, oh, of yes. the increase of his government. Oh, his government will keep expanding. Yes, yes. Amen? And of the oh. peace shall be no end. Oh, hallelujah. There's no end to how his government shall increase. It's taken over and reign shall be no end. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From the latter time forth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord, amen? Notice, notice, the zeal of the Lord of us will perform this. Amen. He gets fired up. Oh. One of the things, when you come into his government, his zeal spirit comes into your spirit. And everywhere you look and you see an injustice government, oh. an inappropriate, unauthorized government, yes. the zeal of the Lord move on it. Yes. This is when you are, no, 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 no. You're under the wrong authority. That is not supposed to happen to you or your family or your mother or your sister or your resource. You need to come in, you understand? To the king of king government. Yes. To the one that was given to mankind. Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. You, see, you will get a love for God and a love for the righteous government and a love for humanity. And you just want to see them, you understand? Your tear. Hallelujah. Do you understand this? Amen. Amen. And this, this, this zeal for righteousness and justice. Mm. Amen. Mm. That's okay. This is the game. Amen. But if you come into my government, Jesus. join my party, join my move. You know, I don't know if anyone you watch government politics, you know how long they campaign for before an election? Roughly? Mm -hmm. Two years. From town to town, city to city, school to school. Christ will come in, and then I want you to go on. And the Great Commission is go and tell everybody about the righteous and just government. Mm. Amen. Go and tell everybody there's a way to make things all right. <laughs> yes. We are carrying on this campaign, trying to get everybody back into the government. Amen. Look at somebody and see you've got glory in here. You've got, you got glory, glory in you. Yeah. Through the government of God, you can release it. Tell them. Through the government of God, you can release it. No, Jesus was born to be king. No, he was born for the government. You understand? To be placed on his shoulder. No, he was given to you. Hallelujah. The increase of his government is no end. See what the angel said to Mary. Go to Luke 1, 30, 30, 31. Luke chapter 1, verse 31 to 32. Amen. This word was decreed by God. And the time has come, the consummation of the time, the readiness of the time was upon mankind. Amen. And the angel of the Lord just saw God send him forth. Um, actually, we're going to be, let's begin from verse 30 to 33. Send him forth to the vessel that he chose, to Mary. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, the Norman angel and I come before you. Mary, for you have found grace Free, spontaneous, absolute favor and loving kindness with God. Hallelujah. That's you too. Oh, That's how you got the son. Wow. And verse 31 said, And listen, you will become pregnant and will give birth to a son. And you shall call him, amen, call his name Jesus. Wow. Amen. He will.
will be great, immense, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his forefather David. Mm. Amen? Mm. And he will reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages. And of his reign there will be no. Mm. That's why they came. That's why the wise men travel. They got the one who's going to reign over the throne of David. There will be no end. The one who the government is on. So Jesus tells Pontius Pilate, I was born to take over the government that you are pretending you're running. Amen. I was born to take over the government that the Egyptian thought they had. You understand? And the Greek or Macedonian, and Media Persia, and the Roman. He said, I was born to be king. And the end of my reign of justice and righteousness, there'll be no end. So you need to know one of the key you must know. Jesus was born to carry the government. That's going to allow your life to succeed. Do you understand, man? If you truly get this, you pinch yourself. Sometimes I think I'm preaching to myself. Pinch my own self. Amen? And in order to show you how this works, you understand? He said, I came into the world to testify to this truth, to stand witness, to show you. When someone operates in the government of God, what happened? He goes, how do you know this is the true government? He said, I'll show you. Uh -huh. I look at a tree, and it's said, bear it, never bear it no more, and it died. He said, only the king can do that. Got a king who owns everything and everyone. And he said, if it's the true government, when I tell a king to do something, it has to what? Do it. Do you understand? He said, and I look at Mary, and she had seven demons, and I could get out. He said, and if a demon knows the truth, I come and they go, son of man, what are you to do with us? Hallelujah. Do you understand? He said, I'm going to bear witness I'm in the right government. And he come and he see a leper and they go, son of David, he was on David's throne. He was on David's throne. Heal us. And I try to go, what do you want? And they go, heal us, son of David. Why did they call him that? The one who sits on what? David throne. He said, and I go, okay, be healed. He said, and, and even my mother understood this. She brought me to a party and she said, son of David, turn this water into wine. Mm. And because water has to obey me, I want to become wine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, when they were drinking the wine, it was the end of the, fe the festival. And the wine was so good, the man turned and go, most people bring out their best wine at first to impress everybody, but you all saved the best wine for <laughs> He said, and I was so much in the right government, I was with my disciples, and I was sleeping, and a storm came, and I get up and I said, wind, hush. Oh, and the wind calmed down, the Bible said, as though it was what? Exhausted. Mm. Only one can do this, the right one. Amen. Government. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. You have to understand. He said, and because I, I was divinely imparted, I wanted to talk to my headquarters, my council, and I prayed, and Moses and Elijah, what? Appear, rap government. Do you understand me? He said, and I choose 72, and I send them, and the demons was running, all those fake government was what? Scattering. So he bear witness that when you're in the right government, what you can do. Amen. If you're unable to be effective, you need to check. Do you really get the trick of which government you should be in and how to remain? This is why he turned to you and he said this in, in John 15. He said, remain in me and I will remain in you. Apart from me, you can do nothing. <coughs> you are absolutely ineffective outside of the right one. Government. You don't kind of have to stay into him. You must. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, I think, so he didn't just tell us the truth, he came and what? Prove it. Therefore, after proving it, which he already knew, he turned to them and he goes, I am the truth. Hallelujah. The scriptures are there for you. And the third key, so the first key is king, the government is on him. The second key, he proved that he's in the right government. Amen. The third key, he said, I am Amen. the truth. Because when I say something, it has to happen. I saw a little girl die, and I go, get up. 
He said a centurion, one, one who didn't even understand, this understand, authority, see me and I, just send your word and it has to happen. Amen. 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 And he turned to us and he got, only the true government in the fourth key can set you free. Understand this. He said, only my word, my government, can set you up free. That's why sometimes I, I, I fight with souls. They go, it's this. I'm like, no, listen to me. You will never be all you can be. You, some people, have, some people, one reason the other day, I might have touched the spirit and get some inspiration. I'm like, listen, it will never work unless you get Jesus. You must. If I have to preach to you all day and all night. Someone, you know, a sister came to see me a couple of nights ago. And she go, you are a unique man. God give you unique grace. She go, I have seen you walk with people in the wrong government for 14 years and you will not believe them. You just, she go, I don't have the patience you have. God, she go, and I've always known you this way. She know me for about almost 20 years. She go, you have always been this way. Because until they know the truth, it can't what? Stop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It can't stop until they come to understand which is the right government. Look at somebody and say, it's the truth sets us free. It's the truth sets us free. And say, and the truth and the is the government, is the government decreed, decreed by righteousness, by righteousness. Rightful, rightful owner, rightful owner. Right law provider, right law provider. Sustainer. sustainer, and enforcer. And, enforcer. and that is Jesus, that is Jesus. Mary's Amen. son, Amen. the one who seek or succeed, David Trump. Amen. Amen. The fifth key, once you understand all of this, he said you need to be committed to this instruction. You need to be committed to the teaching. To us, a son was born. A son was given. The truth is upon injustice and righteousness. He testified to it. He lived it. He decreed the truth shall set us free. And he is the truth. And you need to be committed to this truth. Keep it simple. You need to be absolutely committed to this truth. Don't let the enemy move you. Say, I know which king. I know who government is at hand. Mm -hmm. From we finish this series, I'm going to take you, if the Lord allow it, to where the battlefield is. Mm -hmm. But you'll need to keep this truth in you as you enter the battlefield. Mm -hmm. In fact, pretty much all of us is in the battlefield. One, you're not dressed enough with the truth, and you don't realize the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Because he said, he's not taking you out of it. He just want to prepare you to navigate through it. So he said, you must be committed to the truth that will set you free. Be committed to your government, to your Illinois, to your Lord. Yes. Amen? Yeah. And the sixth key, which we didn't cover, which we're going to cover today. Oh, yeah. The sixth key is really the first key <laughs> of your existence. Because in Genesis 1, 26, he got, I made you to function like what? Me. The sixth key of all the other key, the other five key, is to get you to the sixth key, which is the first key. <laughs> the, first the five key are the correcting keys to get you back a right Amen. to operate as you are decreed to operate. The first instruction. The, the five is Christ, is Jesus. <laughs> Amen. That's why it came. You did one to five to get you back. Amen. He's just asking you, I want you to be what you ought to be. We need to see that. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 34. Amen. The sixth key is to be like God, who is true righteousness. So God said this for you. He said, true righteousness for you is to be like what? Me. Amen. God said, true righteousness for you is to be like him. Hallelujah. Do you understand it? So the reason you have to put a government in place and get the government to actualize itself and to declare itself, amen, and to let you know is the only way you're going to be free and to get you committed is to get you back like him. Matthew 5, 48, you shall be like your father in heaven. Yes. So this I say and solemnly testify, meaning I absolutely testify, amen, the name of the Lord. He said, I'm absolutely testifying on the name of the son that has been given. This is why, did God let Mary pick a name? Maybe she should name him Zach, or Bruce, 
or I know Naaman or something. God goes, no, 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 no. I'm gonna. I'm telling you, I'm giving you a son. I'm telling you, the government is on his head. I'm telling you, he's gonna succeed, David Trod. And I'm telling you what I want you to call him. Amen. Do you understand? None is left to what interpretation. Hallelujah. No chance. Here we are. It says the Paul said. So, amen. This I say and solemnly testify in the name of the Lord. Amen. As it, it look, look at it. As in his present. That you must no longer live as the Eden, the Gentile do, in the perverseness, in the folly, vanity, and emptiness of their soul, and the futility of their mind. Meaning the mind don't understand which is the right government. It doesn't understand if the government has proved itself. God wanted you to learn to discern. So he just didn't come and say, Jesus is the right government. He said, I'm going to make him what? Prove it. He said, Nicodemus caught this. Nicodemus go, only a man of authority can do the thing. What you, you must be a man of God. Because Jesus was what? Proving it. Mm. He just wasn't saying it. He was what? Proving it. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? You see, the, what the futility is or the emptiness of your soul. Remember, your soul is the place you keep all your what? Information. It's your hard drive. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the right information in your soul you understand? If you are going to win in your life. Yes. He went on to say in verse 18. Their moral understanding is darkened. Their basic idea of right and wrong is darkened. And their reasoning is clouded. They can't come clear mm. to the truth. Mm. They are, no, look why. Why did it happen? Yeah. They are alienated. Amen. A strange self-banished from the life of God. They don't know which life belongs to what? God. Which life relates to God? Which life is kingdom life? Yes. Which life is the government life? Yes. They have become alienated, estranged. Yes. Once you, let me tell you something. Anytime you move, Christ meant it in John 15. Apart from me, you can do anything. You cannot do anything. Apart from him, your reason is what? You are cloudy. Mm -hmm. Just, there are two things supposed to be operating in you all the time. Justice and what? Righteousness. Righteousness. This okay. would work. Morally, this would work. Every time you're out of the presence of what? God. Yes. Yes. You'll feel cloudy. Oh, come on. Easy. Yes. Yes. You ever have to deal with something or a situation and you're all foggy? You can't seem to tell your left hand from your right hand where to start, where to begin? Yes. This happens when we move away from the life of what? God. Yes. Yes. If you know anything about fishing, when you take them out of water, at first, they're full of energy. The longer they stay out of the water, they start to act in what? Liturgic. Everything starts to what? Malfunction. So it is with the presence of God. The life of God allows you to function excellent. Mm -hmm. Outside of it, you don't do very good. We are mad at people. How can they do that? Outside the life of God, they're cloudy. Mm -hmm. They have no other option. Yep. Amen? Yes. The Bible said they're, they're estranged from the life of God with no share in it. This is because... Of the ignorance. Amen? Mm. The want of knowledge and perception. The willful blindness. Mm. That is deep seated in them. It's deep seated in the human soul. Due to their hardness of heart. Black out the spirit. Amen? And the insensitiveness of their moral nature. The one that tells them how to do it right and wrong. They're too insensitive to their spirit. Mm. Now how did this happen? Adam and Eve had a nature to protect them and to guide them. But Satan trapped them this way. He got, listen. This tree is the tree of, you understand? Good and evil. It's called the tree of what? Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Ego, I want you to forsake your, your, your justice spirit, your righteous spirit, and get what? Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is this. Knowledge is not bad, but knowledge must be guided by what? Your nature. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is dangerous outside of your moral what? Mm -hmm. Nature. Love. Which is love. Knowledge is dangerous. Mm -hmm. They choose to cut off their nature like God. So they can have what? Knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's called mental ascent. Mental ascent is that I'm full of a lot of knowledge. But I, have, I don't care about myself or anyone or anything. I cannot feel anyone. I don't care about God. I don't care about people. It's just cold and calculated. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to keep your nature oper operating. And then gain wisdom to carry out your nature. Mm -hmm. 
Knowledge is nothing more than a convoy or a vehicle to exemplify and manifest your nature. Do you understand me? It's better ways to do what you are. It's better way to show what you are, which is the image of God. Knowledge is a vehicle used to convey you. Do you understand? When knowledge is used to convey knowledge, you're going to hurt yourself, disrespect the kingdom, your source, where you come from, and hurt other people on your planet, which is what we do. Yeah. The Bible says they have abandoned their moral nature. Mm -hmm. You understand? For knowledge. For knowledge. You can't throw away your moral nature. To throw away your moral nature is to throw away you. That's the whole idea of the ego. The whole idea of the ego is this. I got rid of my moral nature, so I need to form myself. So I'll go, well, I am... Doctor this. I am pastor this. I am Mr. This. I am Mrs. This. You have to put another title because you throw away what? Your moral nature. In truth, you can't throw it away. It's there. You no longer follow it or identify. You harden. The Bible said you become desensitized to your own what? Spirit. And if you're going to do that, you need another way to live. The way the enemy gives you is knowledge. You understand? And most, I remember, he's no fool. You never have really good knowledge. The Bible calls it you have earthly wisdom, not heavenly wisdom. See, you don't give you true wisdom. Can I lead you back to your what? Nature. Mm. He gives you a false knowledge. Yes. The Bible says, they abandon the life of God, the nature of God, for the wanting of knowledge. This is called original sin and still today sin. Adam and Eve goes... They were made in the image of God and functioning like God. Or well, Satan go, here is the tree of knowledge God tell you not to touch. Forsake thy knowledge and observe the knowledge that allow you to know like God. The Bible said that he told them, then you will know what God knows. Mm. So morally, they knew it was wrong. Mm. But they decide to what? Forsake their moral nature so they can get what? Knowledge. Mm. Oh, they did get good and evil. But they had no regulating power then to what? Put it in context. Mm -hmm. Your nature put good and evil in what? Mm -hmm. Context. Yes. Yes. I told you this as a child. I've testified this to you before. I didn't get it. I, in fact, I hated it. When I was a young man, most of my friends followed me. And I always had a big group around me. And I had a major problem I couldn't understand. Because growing up in the Christian environment, my nature was strong already. Mm -hmm. Certain people will do certain things. By knowledge, in order to prove to my friend and to let them fear me, I should beat them up. But something keep interrupting me doing what I want to do. Beat them up. You know what that thing was? My moral nature. I have to use excuse. If we beat them up, people will say we pick on the weakling. This will, this, this will make us look weak. No, the, the one that was weak was me. I couldn't get past my own nature. And the fools who did not bear the knowledge, they just believe me. I go, okay, we shouldn't beat them up. The problem I had, if I beat them up, I can't live with the what? Guilt. Your nature, when you do a wrong, creates what? Guilt. That guilt is not to stay. It's to tell you you're off your mark. You're no longer in alignment with your own what? Nature. Yes. Yes. However, your nature by yourself is not enough. Don't mix this up. The Bible said Christ was with the other priests, learning what? Growing in what? Wisdom and strength. Mm. You need, listen to me, your nature is like your art, not like it is your art drive. And you need the software called wisdom mm. to carry out your nature. Yes. But your nature must govern on it. Mm. It must be the thing you make the decision from. Yes. Do you understand me? Yes. You do need to grow in wisdom and understanding and knowledge. But not by forsaking your nature. In conjunction with your nature. Do you understand me? Satan so get the first original sin is trading your nature. What did he do with Jesus? He tried original sin. Come on, just worship me. Just, just forsake God and I will give you all of this. You know what I'm Showing the brilliance. You understand? And the splendor. And the permanence of the awesomeness. Say, so look at all of this. Mm -hmm. This is why God will bring down the wicked. The wicked are those who use knowledge to exalt themselves, but they have no nature. They have no regards for the weak. They have no regards 
for the injustice. They have no regards for the poor. None! You know why they have no regards? It's not built from their nature. You see, when things are built from your nature, all you want to do is glorify God. All you want to do is showcase what God put in you. All you want to do is help people. You know, I was talking to my wife last night. Sometimes I can't watch certain things. Because when I watch it, it stars my nature. And when my nature is starred, it makes me, I literally will kill myself to get it. If I watch too much poor people or too much injustice, I will move heaven and earth to bring about justice. So sometimes if I don't want to fatigue myself, I just got to hope I don't see it. Because if I see it, it's going to stir my nature. Mm -hmm. Then I'll search heaven and earth for the knowledge to make it what? Better. Work. Right. Amen. That's what your nature do. Amen. Do you understand me? Amen. You need both. Both. Christ had both. The Bible say, so they've become insensitive to their moral nature. Verse 19. In their spiritual apathy, they have become callous. You know, understand? The spirit has become sluggish. It's not working. And past feeling and reckless. You can't become reckless. And have abandoned themselves. Notice what they do. They turn away from themselves to become something different. Amen? And are prey to unbridled sensuality, eager and greedy to indulge in every form of impurity that their deprived desire may suggest and demand. They run, become just pure knowledge being, they, they abandon themselves. How many of you ever know someone you might have grew up with? And you know this boy, you knew it in nature. Then they learned, they went with friends and place, and they learned this and they learned that. And then a day you saw them or you see them do something, you go, who are you? I don't know you anymore. You are not the person I know and you have to walk away. You go, you used to love people. You used to have respect for God creation. No, you don't care what you destroy or who. They have what? Abandoned what? Themselves. And this is why I said, without knowledge, and this is how the enemy does get you to abandon yourself. You just have all this sensitivity and you care about people. The world have a name to get you off it. It's called naivety. Mm -hmm. Naivety meaning like you don't understand your true self after working in conjunction with knowledge. That is true. This is not naivety. Your true self is working. That is not naive. What you have to learn, it has to work with something. Do, do you understand? The Bible says, you must be as soft as a dove and wise as a serpent. So you want your true nature always intact, but you are sharp as a serpent. Amen. And what the enemy does go, because you don't understand that the, the wise as a serpent, oh, get rid of your nature, you're too soft, you're too weak. Mm. And then you just forsake it for what? Knowledge. You abandon yourself. Here's the problem with abandoning yourself. I'm not even sure why you stop being you. You stop growing at that point. And you are extremely dangerous to yourself, others, and God. But not really to God. You can't threaten God. But to what he made you to be. Mm -hmm. Amen? No glory. No glory. Verse 20 said, But you did not so learn Christ. Christ teach you to maintain the nature. Assuming that you have really heard him and been taught by him. Amen? As all truth is in Jesus in body. Personify in him. Amen. This is why he got, I am king born to be the government. I testify to it. I am the truth. I set you free. So soon as you, Jesus, you come into the kingdom, he got, I will release my truth in you. How to come by nature and knowledge. He said, I'm going to give you the God nature, which is yours, what you're supposed to be walking. I'll reestablish your moral nature. Amen. Every great man or woman who have become excellent in this world, who name has become great again? When God said, I'll make your name great again. You want to know how it happened? It's a simple truth. Their moral nature was what? Re-established. This creates the dream and the passion to fix the injustice and the unrighteousness. And they goes nuts. It's what they do we call your great. But something is what? Stirring them up. Before my nature was purified, I never really lose my nature, to be truthful. Mine was always operating. But before I commit to it, I had no desire to get really knowledge. I just want to have fun. When the Lord focused my mind into my nature, which is Christ, the truth, my desire for knowledge, what? And not just any knowledge, for godly knowledge. I just don't pray for knowledge or wisdom. I just pray for what? Godly, godly knowledge and godly wisdom. Amen, amen. 
Not just knowledge. There's a lot of knowledge out there. There's knowledge how to build a car. There's knowledge how to build a house. There's knowledge how to form. There's knowledge how to be a tailor. I want godly knowledge. The knowledge that allows me to work in conjunction with my spirit, you understand? And in alignment with the king's decree. Do you understand me? When Christ, the Bible said, when Christ comes in, because all truth is in body, amen, personify in him, he will release the truth in you. He will fix your nature. He will give you the godly knowledge you need. Amen? Everything you need. Look at somebody and say, I ain't done yet. I ain't, I ain't done, done yet. yet. I'm not done yet. I'm, I'm not, not done, done yet. yet. Look at somebody and say, we've only just begun. We've only just, just begun. Just begun. Just One of the major sanctification that has to happen is the release, the severing of your moral self from all the things that layer it. And typically, it has to eliminate, eliminate the egoic, the knowledge self. Yes. And then, you understand, the real self has to be released, the true nature. And then, you see, your false knowledge has to be replaced with godly knowledge. Yes, 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 yes. Do you understand me? Yes. If you're going to walk in freedom, you need to understand these truths. These are keys. These are keys. Do you understand me? The Bible went on to say in verse 22, Strip yourself of your former nature, your fake knowledge. Hmm. Put off and disregard your old, unrenewed, false self. Yes. Hmm. Amen? Oh. Which characterize, amen, your previous manner of life. He said, look at your life and the reason it's that way, it's based on the false self. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? You go, there's another life to you. This is right where it's going. Lose your life. If you lose the fake, get your real. you will find the real. Because the only thing really is real is you. The other one, you're just masquerading. You work on it every day. Do you understand? You need your friends, your people, and all the things you used to do to keep up the masquerade and the charade. Yes, all the support system. Lose it. Get rid of it. Amen? The Bible says, and be, be, amen? And it has become corrupt through lust and desire that spring forth from disillusion. Because when you move away from your true, your moral nature, you become disillusioned. Disillusion. How you look at things and people and situation was skewed. You don't look at it from your nature. Your, your true nature is made with love. It's the fruit of the spirit and joy and peace and sufficiency. But when you look, you start to see there's want and lack and, and you just looked at it messed up. Because you have moved away from your king, from your government. The Bible referred to that state as unrighteousness. The Bible refer to what we call ego as false self. Mm -hmm. It says you have entered a false self. So in that sense, you go, this is how you this is how you know which life you're in. You go, does your life exemplify justice? Mm -hmm. Do you live for it and fight for it? Does your life exemplify righteousness? Then you're in the right kingdom and in the right state. If it don't, you got you're disillusioned. Mm -hmm. You're corrupt. Mm -hmm. Meaning you're file, the system called you, the unit is not functioning what? Properly. When you have the ability to make a difference and to help other people and you don't, something is wrong. When you have the ability and the functionality to glorify God and you don't, something is wrong. When you have the ability and the functionality to be all God made you to be and you don't, something is, your fire has become what? Corrupt. You need the true government to what? Fix you up. Do you understand me? Verse 23 said... And be constantly, say constantly. constantly. Renewed in the spirit, spirit. meaning the attitude of your mind. Having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. You need to become committed to the instruction. Romans 6, 17. Jesus was born to be king, given to me. The truth is personifying him. He is the truth. The truth sets me free. I am 110 committed truth to truth. Which will release my moral nature. Which will give me the godly knowledge to yet hear. You and the church, oh, Papa, you need to hear what a spirit is saying to the church this morning. Yes. Spiritual and moral resurrection. You need to hear when the spirit of the Lord is hovering. Yes. You need to hear when the government is administering. Yes. You need to hear when David's throne is at hand. Yes. I'm telling you. You need to hear when David's throne is at hand. Yes. You are 
the Davidicum, those who respond to the trial. Yes, Lord, yes. I said, friends of the truth. Mm. He said, uh, do you, in essence, Jesus is always going, do you want to know the truth about who you are? Where you come from? Who is God? What you can do? Where you ought to be? Why you must? Mm -hmm. He said, those who want to know it always find me. Those who don't want to know it run away from me. Yeah. They don't want to know God, don't want to know themselves, don't want to know the capability, don't want to be all they can be, don't want to, you understand me? Mm -hmm. The Bible said in verse 24, oh, and put on the new nature, your true nature. Hallelujah. The regenerate itself, the one that will be cast down by your false self. Hallelujah. Mm. What? Oh, is this one created? Created in God's image. God-like, in true righteousness and holiness. Mm. Hallelujah. This is true righteousness for you. It's there. Amen. And put on the new nature, the regenerated self, created in the image of God. That's how you were created. God-like, in true righteousness and holiness. Your true nature, you understand, functions like God. Your true nature is holy. Your true nature is wholesome. God, what well God is always going to want you to say, I want you to get rid of all the false knowledge and the false self and get regenerated, re up. Everything that is at a point of death, I want it renewed. I want your spirit, man, your moral nature to produce 30, 60 times 100. I want all the dead seed in you and around you to produce abundantly. I want you to respond to every demand. Amen. True righteousness is your regenerated self. Look at somebody and say, God, I'll wake up. I wake Set, up. My time. Set my time. It's my time. It's my time. It's time, church. The sixth key, as we see there, you understand, is to be regenerated into true righteousness, which is the nature of God. Here's the funny thing. He's not asking you to be anything you're not. Mm -hmm. He's asking you to go back to Genesis 1, 26. He, I made you to function and to be like me. He said, I consider that true righteousness. Amen. He said, I consider that holiness. Amen. The issue you have with mankind, they're not functioning. How we made them to function. Mm -hmm. Look at somebody and say, forgive me. Forgive me. I know sometimes I release the false nature. I know sometimes I release the false nature. And I'm not being what I ought to be. I am not being what I ought to be. But I am. But I am. In the right government. In the right government. He's going to fix me up. He's going to set me back on track. He's going to set me back on track. there's a work going on in me. There's a work going on in me. Godly knowledge is filling me. Godly knowledge is filling me. Jesus is the embodiment of it. Jesus is the embodiment of it. Me and around me. So I'm on my way. I'm on my way. In Jesus' name. Jesus. You need to remember these six keys. You need to know Jesus is born to be king. You need to know he's the tested work. You need to know he is it. It's personified in him. You need to know it's the only way you can get back to be like God. What, what he's trying to set you free, set you free to do what? To be like God. To be how you are designed to B, to get your moral nature and godly wisdom to come, bind. To walk in justice and righteousness. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I love 24. And put on the moral nature, the regenerated self, created in God's image. Genesis 1, 26. God-like in true righteousness. Look at somebody and say, you are designed for true righteousness. Yeah. You are designed for true righteousness. To be God-like. To be, be God-like. God I only got two more scriptures for you today. Amen. The Bible say, next week if it's allowed, or the week after, because next week is family day. We, I'm going to show you, once you can be God-like. In fact, I don't even have to tell you this, but I'll just share what the Bible say with you. When you are God-like, you understand? When your true nature is operating... No one need to tell you what to do. You will operate properly. This is why the Bible said, you understand? There is no law needed for what? The spirit, when you're like this. Because it naturally operates what? Properly. But you need a lot of law when you're outside of your spirit. They're there to protect you and others from you, your craziness, your disillusion. When you're in a disilluded state, you need a lot. Laws are like barriers. You know, like when, for instance, when someone is deranged, they put them in a mental asylum to protect them. You have from themselves and protect others from them. That's what laws does for you. Yes. 
It protects you and others from your craziness. You're well, most of us, yes, you're quarantined, perfect. Well, most of us, extreme people, we say they're crazy. Most are crazy. They're in a dissoluted state. They're outside of their true what? Nature. And, and, <laughs> and even worse, they're running the other government. That's why it's a problem. Yep. They're not just below, they're above. Mm -hmm. It's the whole system. And this is why I am so looking forward when we finish this. There's something called Ziglag, the end time church, Woo! which is the government outside of the true nature. And the true nature has to take that government. You need to understand where you are, what time you are in. You're in a war. Amen. But you gotta get your you gotta get your bearings off. Get your, you know, cross your T's and dot your I's. Get yourself together. Mm. Amen? Amen. And at the bottom of your card, it said, do not die under a curse. Do not die with your talent. Do not die in a disillusioned state. Mm. Nebuchadnezzar did not recognize the true king. And he was cast off in the jungle and he was mad for a time. <laughs> running around with animal eating grass, mm -hmm. nails out of control. They had a grooming in a long time. Pedicure, he didn't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, he thought he was an animal. Then the Bible says he was brought back to his right one, mind. Mm. Meaning the mind working in conjunction with the nature. Mm. The, oh, listen to me. This is a key. I want to give you a, a personal, um, through the spirit of revelation. Listen to me. Listen carefully. You want your mind, the knowledge your mind must want the most is to know the spirit of God within you, your nature. You, listen to me. I don't mind reading a few other things, but the thing I want to learn about, what I want my mind to know the most, is the Spirit of God, what? Within me. Believe me, your spirit is so vast and awesome, in a billion lifetimes, your mind could not comprehend the width and the, how big it is. So it don't need to run around out there learning all kind of stupid knowledge when it can't comprehend what? For personal knowledge. The thing your mind has to learn the most, it's about the Spirit of God. Do you understand me? You want your mind very committed to learn about the Spirit of God and the Kingdom of God and the ways and, and the truth of God. It has to stay in this arena. If your mind is not interested in learning about your spirit, but I want to learn about NASA, and I want to learn about the dance, and I want... No, your mind is it's getting knowledge, but it's the wrong kind of what? Knowledge. Do, do you understand me? You want to keep it in the spiritual realms, destiny, and peace, characteristics of the spirit. And you need, I believe, in my experience, and I'm a serious studier, I feel like I've learned so little, and I've been studying so long. This is just telling how vast the spirit is. The more you know, the more you feel like you are. You, you just don't know. It, it still floors me, like, huh. I would say, when you start to operate like God, in true righteousness, go to Zechariah chapter 8. Chapter 20. Zechariah, once you're now you know, operating like God, the truth of set you free. True righteousness. <laughs> In Zechariah 12, verse 8, it says, In that day, when you are delivered, that day for you, will the Lord guard and defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem? And he who is spiritually feeble, just waking up and stumbling among them, in that day, so, so when, you, when you just start waking up your moral self, at first, you have, this is why sometimes you can read your Bible, sometimes you can. Sometimes you can um, stay awake in church, sometimes you can. Sometimes you can get to church, sometimes you can. Because your spirit is not strong enough yet. You're not dominating the mind yet. You, you understand? But God said, even though you're in that state, feeble and stumbling that day, persecution, shall become. So look what shall happen. Even though you're, you're, you're spiritually feeble and stumbling among them, in that day of persecution shall become strong and noble like David. And the house of David shall maintain its supremacy like God, the angel of the Lord, who is before them. So God said, I'm going to Part of when Jesus came to take over the throne is to make all of you like the house of David, supreme, like God. You, oh, come, sir. Can you follow me now? Come on. So let me lead them, Father. Listen to me. You all are designed. Notice, Christ took David what? House. David throne. And you are a part of the house of what? David. And he said, you understand? Once you Christ take over you, even though you're feeble and stumbling, you don't quite got it under control. He said, I'm going to make you strong, supreme, like the angel of the... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see 
it. Look at somebody and say, we belong to the house of David. We belong to the house of David. We will be strong like the angel of the Lord. We will be strong like the angel of the Lord. It doesn't matter how feeble we are. It doesn't matter how feeble we are. How much we are stumbling. How much we are stumbling. Yet I am destined. Yet I am destined. To be a part of the house of David. To be a part of To be strong like the angel of the Lord. To be strong like the angel of the Lord. I am a part of the house of David. I am a part of the You see, you need to understand. You see, later on you're going to learn what the house of David is up against. You need to embody this truth. Jesus is delivering you and healing you, your feebleness and your lack of ability to stand so you can be like the angel of the Lord. He's helping our pathetic. Woo! That scripture gives me hope. Sometimes when I see someone stumbling too long, and I go, Lord, I don't think this one will ever get up. I don't think their moral resurrection will ever come. He says, son, I'm telling you, I don't care how feeble they are. They shall be like the house of David, David walking in supremacy. Thank you, Jesus. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. He goes, so you were one stumbling all over the place. Wrong knowledge in your head. Do you understand me? Now. When you start to operate like the house of David, strong like the angel of the Lord, something's going to happen. Don't be surprised. Take it from a living testimony. It happened to me. I didn't even understand it. I go, Lord, why are all these people bothering me? Go to chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. On that day, as the supremacy of David, amen, is erected, look what happened. Thus say the Lord of hosts, in those days, ten men, amen, out of all language, amen, of the nations, plural, shall take hold of the robe of him who is a Jew, and say, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. When you're operating in the house of David, people are going to walk up to you, even from different language, and go, can I follow you? I believe God is with you. You know this has happened to your pastor. I tell you, some of them, I go, I know I can't explain it to them. They can't speak a different language. Still, they follow me everywhere I want. Go. Amen, amen, amen. Do you understand? They know God, out of them, God gathers to go, I want you to become a part of the altar. So I will take it to one of them that know me. Hallelujah. When you are walking in true righteousness, listen to me. Hallelujah. You will be strong and supreme. Supremacy like the house of David. People will come to you from all over. You'll be walking through the grocery store. They'll come and go, I don't know, can I be with you? And you go, why? I don't know you. But they will know that you know who is the king. Amen. They will know you know who testify. Amen. They will know you know who is the truth. Amen. They will know you know how to get free. And they will know you know how to walk like and function like God. House of the Lord functions like the Lord. Yeah. Are you listening to me? You know, our sister went away back to her country recently, Sister Sharon. And my hope, I was praying for her, was for people to just follow her. Yeah. But my mind was already to this place already. My hope was she to operate like the angel of the Lord. And you see, when you up for years, like Pastor, people ask me, how does people follow you? You don't see them. They follow the Spirit of the Lord. When God wants to help them, he goes, here, you see that? Go hold on to the court, me court. Coat. He goes, you see that man that passed near with that van? Go and hold on to that van. He just bring them. When I was younger, this used to bother me. I used to go, I don't know them. Why did they come out of the woodwork? God himself brings them from all language up to the point. But you have to learn to stay in the Lord. And you have to learn to know the truth. Whose government it is at hand. Yes. One of the reasons the enemy push a lot of us around. You don't know which government is at hand. Yeah. You don't know who was born for the government and given to you. You don't know who testified to the truth, which is truth. You don't know who is the truth. You don't know to get free. Free is to operate in the supremacy like the angel of the Lord. Do you understand me? Is where the angel of the Lord turned to Jacob and said, let me go. Jacob, I am letting you go till you bless me. He goes, you can't tie me up. And he injured him. Mm. 
He said, I'm designed to be what? Free. I ain't gonna let nothing what? Cripple me. When things try to stop you, you just touch it. I go, it ain't gonna happen. Do you understand? Look at somebody and say, I belong to a house. I belong to a house. A house of freedom. A house of freedom. A house of supremacy. A house of supremacy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm speaking right now to the house of David. I'm speaking to those who their moral nature have been resurrected and godly wisdom is in them. The house of David, a supremacy operator like the Lord. Those, I'm telling, I'm expecting people to come and hold on to you. Remember, I'm also expecting it, and I call for the spirit of the Lord, that your moral nature will respond. When you, you see, listen to me. Without your moral nature, you'll tell them, get lost. Yes. With your moral nature, you won't be able to walk up. Wait. You'll end up like your pastor. Sometimes I want to pray to God, I just don't see it. Because if I see it, I have to do something. Can't you just don't show it to me? You see, once your moral nature is up, God knows how to move you. You'll go, okay. You need something, and I know who can do it. You, just go, you see that man there? Walk in front of him. When you're used to able to walk away from him, all of a sudden you're like, what are, what are you doing there? How do you end up here? You have to deal with it. You can't walk away anymore. Do you understand? Because your moral nature come, paralyzes you. You know, one of the things I love about my wife is this. And this, I didn't, I didn't help resurrect this. She was this way. My wife's moral nature has always been operating Amen. since I met her. The only thing she's been growing in what I help with is godly what? Wisdom. Mm -hmm. How to use them in conjunction. Mm -hmm. Amen. Speak to Zerubbabel, the representative of the Davidical monarchy and the covenant in the direct line of the ancestry of Jesus, governor of Judah. Say, I will. Amen. Shake the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. This is where you are from, the Davidic monarchy. Hallelujah. Meaning, a monarchy is what? A long line of power or government or kingdom. Hallelujah. And this is what Jesus take over. And this is where you are what? Adopted into, the Bible call it, ingrafted. Hallelujah. You have been pulled into the Davidic Lineage. The angel, the supremacy. Amen. So he tells her about all this. He said, and verse 22 said, And I will in the distant future overthrow the thrones of kingdoms. Plural. He said, all that, remember, kingdoms mean government. He said, I'm going to overthrow all the government. And I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the ungodly. I told him I'm going to teach you on these matters later. We are in a time where the ungodly, you've seen all this eruption in the world? Remember what is ungodliness. God, I don't know about you, when I was small, I didn't understand this. Ungodliness is nothing more than this. A whole lot of knowledge without what? Nature. God consider a whole lot of knowledge without his nature operating as what? Ungodly. ungodly. Meaning a way of being and operating without your nature governing it. He yes. goes, you are doing this thing, but not because of how I made you. So he said, I am going to overthrow all the government, kingdoms mean government, that operates outside of what? The nature. Understand. He said, all the ungodly nation, and I will overthrow the chariot, amen, and those who ride in them, and the horses, and their rider, shall go down, every one, by the sword of his brother. And verse 23 said, in that day, say the Lord of hosts, will I take, amen, Will I take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shetel, say the Lord, and will make you through the Messiah. How, how do we get it? Through the Messiah, through the one who has been born to us, your descendant, the signet ring. Mm. This is why Jesus said, you see, every one of you are wearing a spiritual ring. Amen. Yeah. Mm. He said, I'm going to make you a yes. signet ring. Every one of some of you know this about me. There are one kind of people I don't like having no conflict with. It's not sometimes I can't fight them. Sometimes I'm, I'm far stronger than them sometimes, but I don't take them on. I don't take on the house of what? David. Nope. Even when they're annoying me, I go, Lord, give me the strength not to come against you. It's not them I'm fighting with. Mm. They have a signet ring, and that ring means it belongs to some body. Mm -hmm. And I want no challenge with my king. Mm. So I walks away. Mm. Like a yes. I got, Lord, just give me grace not to touch your anointed, please. 
They are marked. They are one of the family ring. <clears throat> they belong. They have been engrafted through the Messiah into the Davidic and what? Monarchy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they're still feeble and stumbling. I am telling you, don't touch them. Do you understand me? The Bible says, uh, I heard you, I heard you, I don't touch you, I leave it alone to the Lord. Amen. The Bible said, your descendants, my signatory, for I have chosen you, amen, as the one with whom to renew my covenant to David line, say the Lord of hosts. You are from the Davidican monarchy, and God chose through the Messiah to renew you into the house of the angel. Amen. Amen. People, I don't care if you see yourself feeble and stumbling. God sees you as the supreme house of the angel. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. It's why I think you know the Lord disciplined me recently. Me, you from the house of David, operating a 10% thinking like I am all out. You know what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. The house of David operate at 100%. You only access 10%. We are ways to go, son. You are exceptional people. But you need to get your, you need to get, throw off, you understand, the delusion, the disillusion. What's weakening us is the disillusion of the mind. The mind separates from the moral nature. You need to focus your mind, you understand, to become fully familiarized with the spirit of the Lord within you. Do you understand me? You need to demand your mind to be fully renewed with the knowledge of God. Do you understand me? Knowing your king. Knowing what he attests to. Knowing he is the truth. Knowing that's the only way you are free. Yeah. Be committed. And walk like God. Be God-like. True righteousness. Church, I don't know how to make it any clearer to you. I've got your sister to create a card. I'm telling you, keep this card on your bed. Keep it in your purse. Keep it everywhere. And you have to keep... As Pastor Chuck, Pastor Chuck loves to do this. I promise you he's going to he's gonna listen to this message all five, six times after. You need to listen to it till you understand it. Till you are operating like the house of David. You have to listen to it until you can operate in conjunction with the decree. Do you understand me? I love you guys. I so appreciate your life and the time. Trust me, you're going to need it. I'm telling you. Catch Ziglag. Ziglag is about where you are right now. But from here, it's just what you are, what you do with it. It's all moral. When you are free, you have some moral obligation. When you are the house of David, your moral nature should make you respond certain. David's moral nature was so strong, David's son took over his kingdom. And hunting David to kill him. And while David is running for his life, David, there's a man that didn't like David. Going, it's good. I won't be catch you and kill you. You should be destroyed. And he's just giving it to David. Anyhow, David regained the kingdom. And David Menge, you remember him who cursed you? Mm. Let's kill him now. David goes, no. Mm. No. We ain't going to kill him. Maybe I deserve it. Mm. I ain't going to touch him. Yeah. He go, though he cursed me, I was mean to me in my weakened time. I ain't going to touch him. Yeah. Leave him alone. Amen. How could he do that? You think this can do that? No. Knowledge? Mm -hmm. Knowledge telling he cross you, you cross him. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how he does it. By his moral nature. Mm -hmm. I was listening to the news. I don't know how true it is. And they say the Prime Minister of Israel wanted the Rooney guy to win instead of Obama. Because he and, he and Obama have a fight, and he's afraid if Obama get into power, he's going to take retribution on him. Mm. You have to always fear a man without what? His moral nature. Mm. Especially if they get into what? Power. Mm. The Bible says when the wicked get into power, the people hide. Mm. Because mean, do we remember what, what wicked or ungodliness mean? One who has knowledge or power, because knowledge is power too, without their moral what? Nature. Yeah. But the Bible says, when the righteous get into power, the people rejoice. Why? Their moral nature make them focus on what? The people. Amen. Do you understand me? Yes, yes. Don't trade your moral nature for knowledge. Do you understand me? Don't do it. True knowledge is knowing one's moral nature. 
Amen. Let's pray for me to be able to respond to the demand in, to the grace of God. Most of you know where I live and what the home the Lord have me in is like. And some of you know I have challenging, I have some challenge disciplining my children in a certain way. Let me explain. Brother Courtney laughs with me too. He was doing some work there. I had another fellow doing some work. He got, I, I don't know how I'm supposed to do the work. <laughs> And it's, it's in all my children now. I feel so sorry for my poor wife sometimes. <laughs> she has to learn clever ways of doing it. Anybody comes into the neighborhood, Brianna goes and finds them. Tell me why does this happen? <laughs> they took all the food, everything. They invite them to the house. They make sure they're taken care of. They invite them for dinner. Why is, does this happen? How come she's not observing herself and what they want to do and you know playing and doing everything? Why do they incorporate everyone? You know what brings this about? Nature. The nature. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, now wisdom tells me there's only so many people I can take care of. I'm just like the disciples when they go into Jesus. We have too many people here. <laughs> so my, my logical calculation goes like, Mama, we don't have enough food and we don't have you know. <laughs> But I can't go against the nature because the nature is what I live in, what I show them, and what our kingdom is all about. So me and Mama always have this challenge. How do we do not touch the nature to cross God and kind of make them at the same time without our kingdom is unlimited in abundance? So there's always this unique dance where I go, okay, we can't touch the nature. That nature is supposed to reach out and love and cooperate and take care of everybody. And our kingdom is unlimited, so how do we train them to deal with the demand at hand without violating the nature or insulting our kingdom? So it's always this wonderful, and it always works out. Because I, I never have the guts to go like, well, we don't get enough, because I can't say that, because I'm, I'm telling the king of kings that we don't have what? Enough. enough. Yeah. And I can't, I can't tell them, stop using the nature. <laughs> so I'm always on my knees before God. This is your house. These are your people. If you bring them here, take care of them. It always works. Amen. But it's what's supposed to happen. Your nature is supposed to reach out. You know, I was laughing over the summer, and, and thank God he gave me the grace to enjoy it. The kids spent all summer in the pool, literally every day from 9 or 10 in the morning till 9 or 10 in the night. Every day. Eating, sleep, nonstop. <laughs> but as I said, notice with her, as far as she concerned, everybody will come. But she lacks what? The knowledge that to come cooperate with what? So every so often Mira Mama gotta write us, okay, well, no, we gotta go out or they have to go home or like or like they can't have dinner here because they have to go to their own dinner. Cause as far as she sees, it's just one big <laughs> one big family. You understand? And that's where the knowledge comes in. Well my sons does it to me too. And I've been doing it forever. <laughs> Last night I come home and I was telling my wife, we did the boys' gallery. The door keep just. And I just said, the freezer, the freezer, the freezer, the freezer, the freezer. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Amen. My point is, the nature will connect you to people. Yeah. You don't have to worry about connection. The nature will make you deal with the justice, the nature will make you deal with the righteousness. Yeah. What you will need to pray for, don't destroy the nature, be careful with it. You'll need to pray for wisdom and truth. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is how to... You, you, one of the reasons kids have parents, they cannot understand how to regulate the nature. The Bible says, blessed is the man that can control his own what? Spirit. Mm -hmm. You have to manage the nature. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Wisdom is given to you, why children are given parents, to manage what? The nature. Not to seal it or destroy it. Manage it. Jesus, we see managing the nature this way. There was a Seraphonifian woman. And she come to Jesus and she go, can we have some of the children food? So whether he had healing or what he had bring. And he goes, no woman, I can't give this to you. This belongs to the house of David. He said, the food I have belongs to the house of David. He go, I can't give it. In fact, he, go, he did much worse. He go, I can't give it to dogs because she was outside of what? The house of David. But the woman was brilliant and persistent. She knew what the king liked. Christ loves what? Persistent. She turned to him and she goes, 
But even dogs, master, eat the crumbs of their master. And he looked at her and he said, woman, your fate has even. Amber. Because she had such faith that even though he's on mission, he will not leave the unjust one unjust. Mm. And he gave it to her. Not because she was in his, she was, he was sent to her. Just because she understands the king's what? Right. Not because mm. he's legal. Yes. Not because he was legal. She applied to his nature. Mm. Legally, he, had, he, he was sent to do something. He has to do it. But she called, she goes, okay, I, I know I can't, I can't stop you from doing what you're sent to do. Morally. You understand? But, but morally, don't I deserve something? Do you understand? Wisdom will make you, God will send you and say, Brother Courtney, I want you to go here. No, your nature can't make you give away all the food. Mm -hmm. You still have to get there. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to ask God, God, I know I got to go there and I cannot change from there. I have to take the food there. But can I help her somehow? And he will provide. Amen, amen, you understand amen. what I mean? You don't break tasks. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just find a way to what? In cooperate. Amen. Do, do, do you understand? This is what Jesus was trying to teach the disciples. There were 5,000 people. They go, Lord, let's send them away. We're in a remote area. There's no food around. Let them go look for their own food. Jesus said, it ain't going to happen. You are going to feed them. They go, Lord, if, if we had so much money, we couldn't feed this multitude. He go, I don't care. I want you to feed them. They were using wisdom. They, they, they look at what they have, they look at the crowd. You know, in, in um, economics, there's something called, um, uh, what is it called? Death ratio. You know what death ratio means? Anybody know the term? Mm -hmm. Death ratio is take your income or your money that you have mm -hmm. and divide your debt into it and that gives you what? How much debt you have compared to how much income. It's called death ratio. In banking, that must never exceed 36%. So if I have $100, my debt is not allowed to exceed 36%. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So 64% of my money should be free money for me. Mm -hmm. And all my mortgage and my bills and everything should only come up to 36%. 40% meaning you have too much debt versus the money you have coming in. Mm -hmm. So the disciple did this. I see some people looking at us. They go, "Oh God, we are worse than that." That's <laughs> really show. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so when you go to a bank, if you can't get a mortgage or a loan, that's what they do. They take your income, and they take all your debts, and they divide the debt into the income, and that tell them how much debt you have versus the ratio. So they, they always do everything by a hundred percent. Forty percent, they typically would lend you. You need to track. Yes. At 40%, they go, you have 40% of your money going to debt, and you are only trying to live your life on 60%. They go, that's not practical. Mm -hmm. you know they need more. Minimum, maximum, and I'm talking maximum. Maximum, they'll go is 36. They really like it 20%, 15%, 25 You'll get a loan anytime. So just take your debt, divide it into your income. That tells you how much debt you have to the ratio of the amount. So what the disciples did is exactly that. They go, let's say they have $100. They have 5,000 people. They divide the 5,000 5, people into the 100. They go, our debt ratio is just way up. Our debt is way more than we have. You know, we can't do it. But Jesus was measuring the 5,000 against the kingdom. Hallelujah. He's going, unlimited potential, 5,000. Divide it. Divide it in. This is something I have to always, up to this day, I'm working on this. God just corrects me, not this way, corrects me a lot in this. I see something, I go, Lord, I can't really go. What are you looking at? I, I, I see you, see the ratio, good. What are you dividing it into? You can tell me what you're putting it into. Lord, what I can see, what I have, what I touch, you can, that's the problem. You, you work that ratio always based on what you come to know. You go, why don't you ask me, Lord, what should I divide this debt into? There's no limitation with it. Do you Take this situation and divide it into the kingdom. The kingdom is always unlimited. Yes, so that's just a little bit of uh, economics. That's how, that's how, that's how credit card give you, company give you credit card or you get a mortgage. Take your income, you understand? Add up all your debt and divide it in. It gives you ratio to income. Business works like that. Business works the same. In fact, when, if a bank going to lend a business money, how do we know a business is profitable? You take their debt, Divide it into their 
profitability or their, their income, and that tells you if they're making any money or not. Very simple concept. Yeah. This is called, called the expenses. Correct. Divide or subtract? Divide. Divide. You, take, you want to find the ratio. Take the money or the amount and divide it per dollar. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Jesus with the 5,000, you understand? They, they did the economics as they should. They look at what they have. They look at the 5,000 and they go, there is no chance. We have to send them away. But because he's looking at something completely different, you got a year of little faith. All you know to use is your five senses. And he divided it into a bigger kingdom. Amen. Which no 5,000 can what? Come against. Do you, you understand? Mm -hmm. So this is the process always at hand. The spirit of the Lord and my own family forces me to have to divide my debt ratio into the kingdom all the time. All the time. Unless I want to go against the nature of God. I'm telling the children them, you're not allowed to help people. You're not allowed to feed people. You're not allowed to take care of people. But well, isn't that what I live and teach? Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. So it forces me to increase my faith to live by the kingdom what? Wait. Mm -hmm. JR, you'll always have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> My, my, but my wife had quickly learned that lesson from becoming a Fraser. <laughs> she learned she had to learn to divide the ratio into the kingdom. Quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. And Amen. that takes me back to childhood why there was always one pot, a big pot yeah. of food. We grew up like that. Yeah. Yeah. That in, in, in the home where we come from, my grandmother was a single mother taking care of seven grandchildren. I, to this day, I don't know how she took care of us, and we never lacked. <laughs> But she was a woman of God. Mm. Because clearly the debt was more, but she knew how to put it into the right income. Amen? Amen. In the name of Jesus. Mm. This is why the more income you get, more demand will come to you. Mm. God wants more things to come into it. Does this make sense? In the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to get ready for praying. Man of God, who said this is the best message. It's a message of kingdom and truth. Can you close us, please? Amen. Keep the nature up. Well, as I said, just like a child, my daughter, what my daughter can't do yet, is great she has the nature to bring all the people, but she has to equally learn. She has to divide our ratio into the kingdom. That part she doesn't do it yet. She, 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 she divided right into mommy and daddy. She expects us to get it. She doesn't know where it comes from. You, do you understand? That she has to learn. If she, she has to keep the nature, but she has to learn where the division has to go. Does that make sense? And that'll take time. That'll take time. Yeah. The reason why I say it's the best message is because of, like a man who studies wisdom, I see the threading. I see how it's put together. Amen. Like, Courtney is a craftsman, so when he looks at something, he goes, that's built terribly or that's built well. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because I have a very synthetic mind, and the way the Lord built this is so solid. Amen. It's one step leads to the other, and he just expanded it Amen. into the effects of righteousness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Being like the house of David, having people follow you. <laughs> Amen. And reminding you that you are in the Dominican realm. Amen. Amen. Uh, which is the end result of it all in, from the faith place. Yes. Christ is just a corrective process. Yep. <laughs> to get us back, because God's word never what? Changes. Yeah. He's, He's a redemptive. king. Yeah. Okay. His word is law. If he was a civilian and he said this, no one would listen to him. Perfect. But he claimed to be king. Amen. And he did what he claimed to do. Yeah. Amen. Walk it up. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. First of all, Lord, Lord, King of Kings, we just want to humble ourselves in this moment and give you thanks. Who are we that you're so mindful of us? Amen. Father, you said to enter your gates with thanksgiving. Yes. We just so thank you for your presence. Yes, we just so thank you for being the king. Yes. We just so thank you for your truth. We thank Amen. you for the man of God anointed yes. to do your will, yes. to speak your truth. We thank you for this house of prayer, not a den of Amen. robbers. We thank, thank you for the spirit you've given us and the blood of Jesus Amen. this time, this space. Mm. Father, moving us in alignment with your will right now to with the spirit yes. standing yes. on the word, yes. Father. Yes. 
And let every man, woman, and child know this, Father. Father, help us to declare this as your ambassadors, as yes, your representatives. Father, let us not keep silent. Yes, let us speak on behalf of those that are voiceless. No let be a voice to the voiceless. Yes, that you don't have to stay in your disease, in yeah. your bondage, uh, in your imprisonment. Uh, you don't have to stay in the parrot's cage. You don't uh, have to stay uh, chained. Uh, you don't have to stay trapped, oppressed in the spirit, deluded in the soul, corrupted in the mind, yes, diseased Jesus. in the body, yes, poor in the resource, yes, disconnected in the relationship, yes, cut off from the kingdom, yes, cut Jesus. off from God, cut off from I your mean. true self, cut off from your power, cut yes, off from Jesus. your authority. Because there was one born. Amen. He was born to be king. Hallelujah. And upon his shoulders shall rest the government. government. Yes. His yoke is easy. Yes. His burden yes. is light. Yes. And you have blessed rest and recreation for your soul. Yes. Because he will transfer into you his moral nature, yes. his power, his authority, his yes. weight, his ability, his wisdom. Oh, Father, we thank you that we don't have to live with that deluded self. Oh, shall I not say that self that lives by knowledge with no Amen. moral understanding? Lost. He may have the truth, but he doesn't have love to compel Perfect. him and to control him to use it properly. Perfect. Satan has godly wisdom and yep. understanding, but he never understood love. God didn't save us because we had all the knowledge. No. He saved us no. because of his intense, love. unfailing love. Amen. His love found a way to satisfy his righteousness mm. and to satisfy his love and to keep his word Hallelujah. that you are made in the image of God yes. and you shall have dominion. Amen. And the only way this is possible because one was born in the truth, Amen. one born Amen. of the Son of Man, one born in the lineage of David, one born of yes. Mary, yes. one who walked with the government on the shoulders, Amen. one who was prophesied Amen. the Messiah. He Amen. came in the truth. He came tabernacle in the flesh. Amen. He came full of glory. Amen. He came full of kindness. He came full of mercy. He came full of favor. He Amen. came full of abundance. He came full of truth. Amen. Because only the truth sets you free. Yes, and he is the truth. Yes, Jesus, Jesus was full, embodied with the truth. And the only way to capitalize, to take advantage of this, is to be committed with all your heart to the instruction, the teaching of the truth. Because only the truth sets you free. The truth is the word of the king. The government is at hand. The kingdom Amen. is at hand. Every other government has to bow its knees. Every knee, every authority shall bow. All authority and power was given to Jesus. And he resurrected and he overcame. And because he overcame, you shall overcome. Hallelujah. In this world, you will have trouble. You will have trials. Uh -huh. But rejoice. Do not uh -huh. fear. Be uh -huh. confident. Undaunted. I'm deprived of the world of the power. shall walk in true righteousness. You yes. shall not have the emptiness of your soul. No. You shall not walk deluded, desensitized, no. and yeah. insensitive to your true moral nature, which is love. I will melt that hard heart. I will give you a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone. You will walk through the valley of Baca. You shall cry. You shall yes, repent. Jesus. You shall yes, melt. Jesus. And underneath the fear, underneath the sorrow, underneath the anger, underneath the loneliness, underneath the jealousy, underneath the rage, underneath the bitterness, underneath the fear is my love. My love lives inside of you. Amen. Your spirit lives in you and my spirit is love. Amen. And you are made in my image and that love will compel you. That love will control you. That love will guide you to be soft as a dove, Amen. wise as a serpent. You don't need the ego to protect you anymore. No. You got the wisdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you that we're no longer banished. Yes. Thank you that we're in oh. the kingdom. Thank oh. you for teaching us righteousness that we can be surrounded in. Blessing. Thank you for the grace to strip ourselves of the deluded one, full of delusion and lust, and regenerate ourselves with true righteousness and holiness. Yes, Jesus. I miss your word. Oh, thank you. 
I don't care if you're stumbling. I don't care if you're weak. I don't care if you're feeble. Seven times a righteous man shall fall. Seven times he shall rise. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord delivers all those who trust. Amen. and rely on Him. Yeah. He's full of mercy. Yes. He abounds in loving kindness yes. and grace. Yes. And if you commit to Him, if you believe in Him, if you trust in Him, He will deliver you. He will maximize your freedom. Yes, Jesus. He will allow you to operate in true righteousness and holiness the way it was intended. Yes, Jesus. And you shall be supreme. Yes. You shall reign like the house of David, like the angel of the Lord. It's and men shall grab your cloak and say, you are like God. Yes. Teach me what you know. Yes. And you shall say, what I know is that Jesus is the king. Yes. Jesus, Jesus is the truth. Woo. Jesus is the only way to be free. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank you for that. Oh, the covenant. We thank you for the signet ring. We thank you for making us oh, back the way we were. Amen. Father, oh. what were we doing so deluded in the world? Take this function. Thank you. Oh, Father, thank you for the grace to break us from the curse of sin, Father. We will not die in sin. Amen. We must because we can. And we can because someone already has done it. Amen. Amen. He's declared the end from the beginning. Amen. And we shall continue to walk it out by faith because we must. Yes. Father, we thank you for the spiritual and the moral resurrection. Yes. yes. Lord. And you continue to renew the entirety of our mind, conscious and subconscious, breaking us away from the conformity and behavior patterns of the world, which is the wrong government. Amen. We thank you for your presence. It is so strong. It continues to clean us, revive us, invigorate us, strengthen us, and inspire us yes, with the zeal of the Lord. Yes, and because of your zeal, you shall accomplish your goal. Amen. That the weak shall say they are strong. Amen. And they shall overcome by the Blood. and the testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. may you go forth as Thank God's you. ambassadors, yes. operating in the truth. And may your nature guide you yes. to stop and love and help the one in yes. front of you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we say, Amen. 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 Also, David, you are blessed. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. It is the Messianic Reborn. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh,